Beloved listeners, I bring you greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Moment of Reconciliation. Moment of Reconciliation is a program the Lord has laid the burden in my heart to bring to you. It is a program that God intends to use to draw you close to himself. It is a program that God wants to use to reconcile as many as possible to himself. Therefore, I crave your indulgence to please give me your attention and listen to the message that the Lord has for you today. Today, by the grace of God, I want to share with you on the topic that says, no consideration in hell. No consideration in hell. Before I go on, let's read from the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 26. The Bible says, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat from what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here. Now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. I would also like to read from the book of Hebrews chapter uh, 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says, Just as people are destined once to die once, just as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. Like I earlier said, there is no consideration in hell. Father, bless your word as we listen, as we share your word. Let lives be impacted. Let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The book of Hebrews says, it is appointed unto men, just as it is appointed unto men. People of all class, people of all levels. It doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter where you come from, what, what you have achieved, what you have attained. It doesn't matter. All that matters is why man has appointment with death. A day will come, you will die. A day will come, I will die. Death is inevitable. You cannot cancel it. You cannot pray and fast that you will not die. Even some people that went to Dibia, that went to one juju doctor, one witch doctor or the other to collect talisman, one charm or another, so that they will not die. We have seen them, many of them, they have died. It is appointed unto people, unto men, to die once. And when one dies, you go to face judgment. This implies that there will be no changing of that judgment. This implies that there will be no review or redress of that judgment. Now, let us go to what we read in the book of Luke chapter 16 from verse 19 to 26. The rich man whose name was not mentioned in the scripture where we read, he lived in luxury every day. He was well clothed. He lacked nothing. But 
he was self-centered. His, his life was, he was privileged to have all that life one could want to have in life. He was privileged to, there, there was nothing that he, he lacked. There was nothing that he would say, this is for this reason, for that reason. I, I didn't give my life to Christ. I didn't worship God. I didn't know God. But in the midst of all those things, he lacked something that was very important. This rich man represents the privileged whose riches has made them become hardened the mind and insensible to the feeling and the needs of the poor. That is the rich man. Lazarus was a beggar. His condition had made people to feel offensive whenever he comes around. His condition was so bad that they laid him at the rich man's gate. He was there always just to eat what the rich man would never desire to read. He was not expecting to get from the rich man's table. But the day came, the Bible tells us, and Lazarus died, and he was taken by angels to Abraham's bosom. His spirit was taken. A day also came, the rich man died, he was buried, and he found himself in hell. Hear me, your, your financial status in life in this time where you are alive on earth does not determine where you will go when you go to eternity, where you will spend eternity. Your, your, what you have been able to gather, the influence you command, it doesn't make you to go to eternity and also become a giant. Your muscle here does not mean that when you go there, you will also be that powerful. What determines where you will go in eternity? is the life you live now that you are here today. What determines whether you will go to eternity in a place of joy and comfort is the way you live your life or whether you will go to a place of torment like the rich man found himself. The Bible says, death is inevitable. It is appointed unto men to die. If it were something that could have been averted by what the man had, the riches of the man, they would have used it to get more life for him. But because this death is an appointment, the rich will die, the poor will die, the old will die, the young will die. Beloved, if you die today, your money cannot save you. Your riches cannot save you. The Bible says Lazarus died. He was not known by anyone. He was a beggar. Always at the rich man's gate, he was buried. But one thing that is important is he knew God. He was, his, right, his heart was right with God. So when he died, his spirit was taken to God, to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. He was buried. Permit me to say here that the rich man received a befitting burial. The rich man was honored. The rich, people, men of class, men of high caliber, they attended his burial. But at the end of all, of it all, he found himself in hellfire, a place of torment. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lazarus went to be the Lord with the Lord. The rich man also died, his body was buried. His spirit was in a place of torment in Hades. At death, one's destiny is sealed, as it is written in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27. There is no second chance after death. We should know this, because the earlier you know it, the earlier you begin to amend your ways. The amendments you make today will help you to go to a place of comfort instead of a place of torment. But if you refuse to amend your ways, if you refuse to turn a new leaf today, you will go to hell. And right there, there will be no remedy. There in hell, the rich man found himself being tormented. There in hell, he found himself in agony. In fact, one of the things he asked for was consideration. 
he thought he could be considered. He told that in hell there, that because of his riches while he was on earth, that he will be considered. You know, you know all these things that happen here on earth. People, because of their position or what they have, they think they find favor at all times in any way, you know. There is no how things will not work out for good for me. After all, I have the money, I have the connections, I have all it takes. You know, people think so, but it is not so in eternity, my beloved. In eternity, you go to face judgment and you are rewarded according to all that you have done while you were here on earth. This man sought for consideration. I see the first consideration this way where he said, Father Abraham, oh, ask Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my thirst because I am dying in thirst here. If it had been when he was on earth, he would have just gone to call one of his servants, they go to the refrigerator, get him a very chilled water, he will quench his thirst. But this is not your house. Hellfire is not your house. Hellfire is not your parlor. It is not your room. It is not your, your, your it is not the place where you used to lodge. It is not your comfort zone. It is not your comfort zone. Don't go to hell. That is the essence of this message. The moment of reconciliation is meant to bring you back to God, to return you to your maker. You can't waste this opportunity. If you waste it and go to hell, you have yourself to be blamed. And remember, no consideration in hell. The rich man, he began to ask whether he could receive a kind of grace, a kind of favor. You know, he thought that in, in hell he could you know, gets a kind of mercy that anyone will pity him. There was this, it, such time had elapsed, such time had expired. You can get favor, you can be, you can receive mercy. Grace can locate you only now that you are hearing this message, because you don't know what next that is coming your way. Death may come. One thing I see in the life of this rich man is that even there in hell. He could not ask for deliverance. He yet could, he was yet self-centered. He began to ask for Nazareth to dip the tip of his finger in water and quench his thirst. He was not even asking for how to be brought out of the fire of torment. He was yet asking for comfort in that very place of torment. He forgot hellfire is not a comfort zone. Beloved, he was asking for a relief. He was asking for favor. He was asking for grace. He was asking for mercy. Such things does not un, do, not, uh, do not exist in hellfire. Hellfire is only meant for torment. Torment for those who disobeyed God. Torment for those who could not live the way God instructed that man should live his life. You know, you were created for God's pleasure. You were created to obey and to serve God. Look at what Father Abraham told him. Abraham said to him, between you and we that are over here, there is a chasm. In King James' rendition, the Bible says, there is a great gulf fixed so that if anyone would have wanted to come over to that side from here. It is impossible. If anyone would also want to come from that side to this other side, he can't make it. Beloved, hellfire is real. If you don't know it, know it today. The rich man had received his final judgment, for he could not be delivered from his present predicament. He could not be delivered from what from the state of condemnation where he found himself he could not go to abraham's bosom neither could lazarus who was already in a place of comfort go over to the other side to give him help beloved death should not scare us rather death should make us to make the proper preparations it should motivate us there is a finality of destiny in hell. The realization of this truth should make us to prepare ourselves because there is no consideration in hell. 
The rich man's life was consumed in self-centered living. He made the wrong choice and suffered eternally. Lazarus lived all his life in poverty, but his, right, his heart was right with God. And that was why he could receive such help he received from the Lord. What is the help? His soul, his spirit was taken to Abraham's bosom. You cannot get this if you do not live right now that you are on earth. Any day you leave this planet earth and go to eternity, you can no longer be considered. Consideration can only be now. Redress can only be now. Review of your life can only be now. You can only make amends. You can only make changes now. But when it is over, whenever you die, all about you is over. There is no two ways about it. There is no consideration again for you. Beloved, this message has come your way to alert you, to call on you, to get you ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You can only get to eternity, a place of comfort, a place, the paradise, if you know Jesus, if you make him the Lord of your life. Today, I call on you in this moment of reconciliation to come back to God, your maker, now that you have the time. If not, you will regret in hell. Come home. Come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Do not be deceived by the things you have. You may have amassed wealth, but they can't save you. When death knocks at your door, the door of your life, you must give up. When the owner of your life comes to take it, even now, you will drop dead. And when you die, there is no consideration in hell. There is a finality of destiny in hell. Don't forget this. Give your life to Christ. Let me pray with you. Father, I commit my listeners into your mighty hands. There are those who, through this message, have decided to give their lives to you. I pray, let salvation that will save their souls from hell, a place of torment, be given, be ministered, be delivered to these ones. All over the world, where they are listening, where they are viewing, I pray that grace might locate them today, now, that they are alive before it becomes too late. Thank you for answering my prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, we shall come your way same time, same station next week. Keep watching Messenger's television and keep watching the moment of reconciliation. Remain blessed.